Let's give it up for our next headlight tour. tell you what are the final points of a good design. I am here to talk about how to end the world with bad UX. And if you are here, that means you are all interested in knowing the almighty power of UX by which we can destroy this world. So, uh, my apologies personally because I look like the developed version of the Figma file. So I am Dushan Karungo, uh, I have 24 years in the digital domains and in the industry. I come from Galaxy UX Studio. Uh, I am an alumni of uh, UV Bristol and uh, IIM Indore. And uh, you can follow me on Insta and LinkedIn. Uh, I would love to connect with everyone. So here are uh, the two things that I really did I'm proud of is one, a book called UX Banter, and, sorry, UX Decoded and the podcast called UX Banter, which is uh, now it's in fifth season. So, story time. Before that, all the domains that I worked for, sorry about the fluctuation. So, over the years, I've worked with multiple brands in multiple domains and industries, and that is the way uh, things have turned out, that the exposure is different, the work culture is different, the managers are different, the way people are looking at things are different. So, as I was talking about the story, so on January 13, 2018, something amazing happened, which was that this alert was sent to every single resident in the state of Hawaii. Now, imagine, this is a, a test which was conducted by our government in India as well, that you get this consistent beeping noise and you get this message. So the message says, a missile is coming to the island of Hawaii, and this is not a drill, take immediate shelter. What would you do if somebody says missile incoming in Bangalore, take immediate shelter? What the hell is going on? Everybody would panic. They would panic and would talk to every person they know and everybody would try to escape the time. And you can see that this came on a Saturday morning that you people were in the beds probably enjoying the weekend. And they started to find as much shelter as they can. They tried to hide in the, uh, the, the receiver um, just to get away from whatever nuclear can help them. But then after around 30 minutes, another message comes. And this message says, no threat. Again, repeating, there is no threat. Nothing is going to happen. Don't worry about it. But this sort of uh, misunderstanding that, and this message came at the time when the uh, big debate or discussion or uh, the fight between the Trump administration and uh, North Korea, the players were flying high and everybody was a bit scared that anything could happen and then this happens. And the missile alert, in error, there is no threat, there is a message that they have to publicize. So this was the governor of the state and he said that we will do a full check as why it happened and it was a big deal. And um, the news outlets who were reporting it, they said that we figured it out, don't worry, it was a wrong button. Wrong button. When you hear about it, that can you imagine that how, what sort of button could it be that makes about million people shit their pants early in the morning? So, this was the button. Now can anybody tell me what was the button here which was clicked? This was the UI that is used to send the messages, whether it is a drill, if it is not a drill, if it is a warning about tsunami, or a nuclear missile. Here it is, the grouping. And we are talking about not some small two people team who ended up sending this. We are talking about the United States defense. 
Let's just get it through a minute. I mean, just, you can look at it, you can read it and see what sort of UX was approved at that time in functioning, in public domain. So Jakob Nielsen, um, I was with him at the fireside chat and other conference that happening uh, in parallel by ADP list last night and this was one of the topics that we also talked about. But Jakob Nielsen, when the website actually started, the NN Group's website, that is when uh, this article was published on the site, but it, it is not something that is written at, in 1995. It was written much before that. That is simple 10 usability heuristics. And I'm not going to bore you because I know every one of you is expert UX person. But if anybody would have checked that screen against these heuristics, do you think it would have made it live? No. Not a single one of us would have gone through with that UI. So, what happens? People of the internet, they decided to help. How? Some UIs, they popped up on Reddit and Twitter and Dribbble for creating a better system. So, you select the alert type, you uh, check the information and you finally send it. Great design, great UI, or not. Still, the primary action on this screen is send. On this screen, I'm not sure what did I choose on the first screen in the first place. And how many times do I have to send a real world alert? It looks good. Doesn't work. <laughs> Better efforts were made. Can this do? Can it work? Maybe. Yes. Better grouping. You know that you have selected the option which is in the green category. You have chosen the option which was in the red category. But still, send. <laughs> Emergency alert is the primary action. When you decide to panic people, get that sense of terror in them, you do these sort of activities and you design something on these lines. Another story. It was at the height of Cold War. Um, in 1983, on this date of September 26th, this guy, Stanislav Petrov, he was a commander at a nuclear submarine and he gets the data from the system that says America has launched missile attacks, nuclear missiles are in the air and he was ordered explicitly that in case of an attack or preemptive strike, they have to first send the missiles and then alert the management or the government that something has happened. But we did not hear about it. It is a real incident. There was no new nuclear war between US and Russia. Well, it was Soviet Union at that time. What happened? So Peltrov, with his right mind, just thought, wait a sec. US has so many nuclear missiles. And why are they going to send only five missiles in this direction? It doesn't make sense. He wanted to get a confirmation, but because it was on a submarine, there was no visual confirmation of data that can be received. He decided to not do it shamefully. Well, ending the world, right? That's what we are here for. <laughs> so this guy decides, let's not do it. And coming back, what was the data that he was looking at? He was looking at the sun's rays reflecting on dense cloud set that was showing up on the radar for some reason or the other. The data that it was looking at was wrong. And if the data was wrong, what if AI was programmed to do the, and execute the same commands? The data says there is a missile. The we are firing it automatically. There has to be a limit. So, 
things that AI and computing are still far away of doing, which is understanding the cognition of human mind. So, what this theory of cognitive psychology from Gestalt says, there are a few points that there are parts where we as humans perceive things differently and once the computer gets cognition, then it is not a computer anymore, AI is not there anymore, it is another step in the evolution of this planet. We have just created another species which has that consciousness and this is going to stay. We cannot automate everything shamefully. Simple solution? This would have worked, probably. Try the original problem that I'm coming back to. So this UI could have just grouped things together so some sensible person sitting in the front of the desk could have just, you know, said, okay, I am not sending an alert, so error message wise, he can just move the cursor to the drill part. Um, so why these things happen? Why? Why would you end up a UI like this? Budgeting issues. Wait. Isn't the US Defense Department the most funded institution in the world? And where do they cut the budgets? Design. That's us. <laughs> Sorry, we got no funds for you. You can just do whatever. <laughs> um, so, while we are at it, there are things with just these two methods. One is the cognitive psychology and heuristic evaluation. Redesigning any system, any project that you have which is running, which is ongoing. How do you deal with those? So, we did systems where information was hard to find. Simply using heuristics, you just change. Here, the bigger problem or the challenge remains is that how much coding debt are we adding as designers? How much APIs have to be rewritten? Any API which has to be rewritten costs money in the development cost. So if we can just fix the UI that is presented, just redo the information and you have the same data represented, there is no difference between the two screens before and after. The data is the same. It's just the way it is presented. Just a little bit of understanding of heuristics and you can fix it. Another example, same data, same screen, same company, but still, the data is now more readable. And these are smaller steps. You don't need to go big on this. Just keeping the eyes open the time it is delivered. You can do this really quickly. Same goes for Kanban chats. Reducing the cognitive load, focusing on the information, focusing on the content, that how can it be made better, accessible, or say, delightful. You put too much colors, yes. That was without colors, yes, but we are mixing them together. So, and same thing goes with dashboards. This is a boring part that we do, but enterprise design is where the big money comes from. <laughs> and that is what we should be doing. So, let's end the world. That's the mission. Always confuse the users of mission critical systems. In the operation theatre when the doctor is working on a machine, how critical could that be? Just give them 5000 buttons to click on. Let the patient be patient. I mean, we are creating a system, it has to have extra features. Let AI decide where to cut and automate. Never look for proof and design theory because if you do, that is research, the extra hours, the extra employment that you are actually creating. And money is being spent, so why should I? I am quoting a project which is a US organization and the cheaper I quote, the better chances that I am going to get this project, right? Where can I cut the cost? Not my developers. Let's save every single penny while paying the designers. What do they do? They just sketch, they just color, and use as much automation AI as possible. See, 
we are shipping technologies which may or may not turn out well. I mean, this year nobody talks about blockchain. What happened? Last year, it was all about blockchain, blockchain, blockchain. So you had a solution. Now everybody was trying to figure out what is the problem. You all are here and for last two years maybe, the crypto and blockchain was everywhere. Where is it now? Some people are using it, but still not being as much talked about at conferences as it was used to. Right? So, let's automate everything. Let us send nuclear missiles automatically. With that, we can win, we can destroy this world, and with AI, the server farms using as much money and energy as possible, let the planet go to hell. Thank you. I am mentoring at ADP List uh, with over 2,500 uh, minutes of mentoring experience if anybody wants to uh, join. And we are hiring at Galaxy OX Studio for all the positions. So if anybody else wants to be my minion, uh, welcome. <laughs>